हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अ थर्ड यूनिट ऑफ मेजर थ्योरी एंड इंटीग्रेशन दिस इज लिबेक इंटेग्रल सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच अबाउट द लिबेक इंटेग्रल एज वी ऑल नो दैट इट इज एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ रिमान इंटेग्रल द थ्योरी ऑफ रिमान इंटीग्रेशन इट्स वेरी यूजफुल फॉर सॉल्विंग मेनी मैथमेटिकल प्रॉब्लम बोथ प्योर एंड अप्लाइड it doesn't meet the need of number of important branches of mathematics and physics riemann integration of a function is defined on the closed interval and it cannot be defined on arbitrary set so lebesgue integral it is an extension of riemann integral lebesgue integral is defined over a set this is the major difference between now as we know that riemann integration is defined over the interval ab let f be any bounded real valued function on the interval ab we first take the partition of ab as x0 less than x1 less than x2 until up to xn for this partition we will first find out the upper sums now what are the upper sums over sub interval each sub interval we will find out the max value of the function call this as mi and then we add all these values over each sub interval then we will get the upper sum here the upper sum is denoted by capital sp and then similarly we can find out the lower sums which will be what that will be the sum of the smallest value of the function over each sub interval into its length here this xi minus xi minus 1 is the length of the interval so this is nothing but the area of rectangle of each rectangle of the function okay so we will get lower sums so these all upper sums and lower sums they may be vary with respect to the partition p so what is riemann upper integral it is nothing but the infimum of all the upper sums with respect to the partition p similarly lower riemann integral of f over ab is nothing but the supremum of all the lower sums so now I, why we take infimum and supremum in case of upper riemann integral we consider infimum because we are having the maximum value so we are finding the upper rectangles area so we want to find out the area under the curve of the function f over this interval ab with respect to x so we know that the integral represents the area of the uh, function over this interval ab so this represents the area of basically curve so more appropriate is what you will find out all the upper sums with respect to the partitions so that will be the largest values of the functions using largest values so in these largest value which will be the minimum worm that is most appropriate area under the curve similarly in all these lower sums with respect to the partition which will be the maximum value that is most appropriate the value of area under the curve okay so we will get in this way we will get upper riemann integral and lower riemann integral and we know that our function is riemann integrable over interval ab if both these values exist and they are same and generally we denote this by simply integral of of the function f over the interval ab so what is necessary condition for riemann integral the necessary condition is function should be bounded it should be defined over the interval ab and it should be bounded okay we can also define this riemann integral in the terms of step function now recall step function now what is step function a function is said to be step function if it is defined on the closed interval ab we take partitions and over each sub partition the function attain values constant okay so here psi be a step function on the interval ab and psi x is constant ci whenever you are x varying from xi minus 1 to xi and i varying from 1 to n so this is a partition over each sub interval the function attain value constant 
so in this way we can define the in elementary integral of psi over ab which is nothing but the summation of these constants into length right so this is elementary integral of this step function of the constant function over the interval ab that you will find out the value of integral over each sub interval so if this value is unique and its sum is finite then this is a you know, represented by an integral of a step function psi okay so what will be your riemann upper integral you will take the infimum of all these step functions which are greater than equals to f so here this step function greater than equal to f means this constant value is greater than equal to f means your f is less than equal to that constant value so that constant value is nothing but the max value of the function so here this step function we are choosing all those size which are greater than equal to f and we find out these values that is nothing but the summation that is same as that upper sums and then we take infimum so in this way we can define the riemann upper integral in the terms of step function similarly we can define the lower riemann integral in the terms of step function okay so we, now we have to define lebesgue integral so in case of lebesgue integral we will choose step function uh, rather choosing step function we will choose simple function as we know that simple functions are the extension of step function so in case to define lebesgue integral we will choose simple functions now some properties of riemann integral that a bounded function is riemann integrable if and only if it is continuous almost everywhere now what's the meaning of almost everywhere almost everywhere means at those points where your function is not continuous the measure is zero okay if measure is zero to, then clearly the value of integral over that function will be zero so if your function is riemann integrable it is continuous almost everywhere okay here it is an example of a function which is not riemann integrable and it is discontinuous at infinite number of point it is not continuous almost everywhere okay we can easily find out the upper sums and lower sums and we will see the upper integral is not same as that lower riemann integral so this function is not riemann integrable but in the further in lectures we will see that this function is lebesgue integrable now how to define the lebesgue integral of a bounded function first as i have said earlier in case of lebesgue integral we Uh, shift step function with simple function we replace step function with simple function so in case to define lebesgue integral we first consider any simple function and we know that step function and simple function both are measurable since simple function can be written in the form of this it is nothing but summation of ai characteristic over ai where ai's are the sets which attain constant values okay and all these ai's are disjoint and measurable and the numbers ai's they are distinct and non zeros so assume that phi vanish outside a set of finite measure now what does it mean it means those points where the function have infinite measure okay where the set have infinite measure the function assume value zero the phi is zero for all x belonging to the set whose measure is infinite so we can write integral of phi as summation of ai and characteristic over ai will be replaced by measure of ai when we take integral okay as we know that integral of the constant number is the constant number into the value of uh, the length of the interval that over which this is defined here the length is replaced by measure so this will be a measure of a set ai okay so this is clear that in case of simple function integral of simple function is nothing but the summation of ai's into measure of ai where these ai sets are disjoint and measurable and attain constant value non zero constant value okay so if e is measurable set then we can define the integral of phi over e by 
the integral of phi over e is nothing but the integral of phi into characteristic function over e so which will be replaced by measure of e okay so this is the elementary integral of simple function right now this is the lemma which says that if phi is simple function it is the sum of ai's characteristic over ei where ei is measurable with finite measure and these sets are disjoint then integral of phi is nothing but summation of ai into measure of ei okay and this is very simple to prove we have to just replace characteristic of ei what is the meaning of characteristic over ei means it attains value 1 when your x belongs to ei it attains value 0 when your x doesn't belong to ei so we have to integrate 1 over the set ei which gives you nothing but the measure of ei so measure of ei into ai and so on right so that will give you the summation okay so this is lemma proof is not required the next is the theorem which says if we have two simple functions which vanish outside a set of finite measure then the integral of a phi plus b psi is nothing a times integral of phi plus b times integral of psi that means we can take constants outside just simply integrate the function and then you multiply by the constants okay similarly and this is same as in the riemann integral we know that similarly if our function simple function phi is greater than equal to psi almost everywhere then the integral value of phi is greater than equal to integral of psi and this is also easy to prove since our phi is greater than equal to psi almost everywhere it means psi less than psi, uh, phi less than psi the points where the phi less than psi the measure of this set is zero if the measure of this set is zero then the value of integral over this set will be zero because we have to multiply with zero so there is no effect of the values where the measure is zero so we will get the integral of phi is nothing but greater than equal to integral of psi so we have to use these as just statements no need to give the proof okay so next is the how to define the lebesgue integral so let f be any bounded function over a measurable set e with finite measure then we can consider the elementary integrals of simple functions psi and phi and then we take infimums and supremums then this is represents the upper lebesgue integral as same as in case of riemann and this represents the lower riemann uh, lebesgue integral and when these two values are same we will say our function is lebesgue integrable so this is a definition of lebesgue integral we have to consider two simple functions phi and psi such that psi is greater than equal to f phi is less than equal to f we have to take infimum over this in integral and supremum over this integral then this represents the upper this represents the lower if both these values exist and are same then we will say our function is lebesgue integrable okay so this is a definition of lebesgue integral so this is a definition uh, this is a theorem this says if f itself a simple function then the it is always lebesgue integrable value of upper lebesgue integral is always same as that lower lebesgue integral and it is equal to the integral of f okay this is obvious because here f is itself simple function so we can choose phi and psi to be same as that f okay so this is a definition which i have already told you so every simple function we get what what if we get we get every simple function is lebesgue integrable okay and this is nothing as same as that elementary integral right so this is a notation 
that we can define the integral of f over a set E. This is nothing but the Lebesgue integral. Okay. So if f is bounded measurable function which vanishes outside a set of finite measure, then we can write integral of f over E as integral of f into characteristic of so this is a major difference between Riemann and Lebesgue that Riemann is defined over the interval AB and Lebesgue is defined over a set E. So next we will show that the important role played by measurable functions. So what is the relation between Lebesgue integrable and measurable function? Okay. So the next theorem that says the bounded function f defined on a measurable set E of finite measure is Lebesgue integrable if and only if f is measurable. So in the proof first part let f be Lebesgue integrable over E. So by definition of Lebesgue integral infimum means uh, infimum of simple functions is same as that supremum of simple functions integral that means lower Lebesgue integral is same as that upper Lebesgue integral and say it is i. Right? And here these are phi and psi both are simple functions such that f is less than equal to psi and greater than equal to phi. Given any integer n, there exist simple functions phi n and psi n such that our fx is lying between phi n and psi n and satisfying these inequality. Now how? Just see, infimum of all these integral is i. So clearly for any n, integral of psi n will be less than infimum plus epsilon. So whenever we add some number in the infimum, we are having some integral which is less than this. Same way by the definition of supremum, if we subtract some positive number, it will not supremum. So we are having some integral which is greater than i minus 1 by 2n. So here we choose epsilon to be 1 by 2n. And when we subtract these two inequalities, we will having integral of psi n minus integral of i n is less than 1 by n. Now we define the functions psi star and phi star. Psi star. star is the infimum of all these psi n and phi star is a supremum. Since we know that simple functions are always measurable, so each phi n and psi n is measurable. Again, max of 2, minimum of 2, supremum of the sequence of functions, all are measurable. So, phi star and psi star, they are also measurable functions. And they also satisfy this inequality because this inequality holds for each n. So, this is true for supremum and infimum also. Now, corresponding to these sets, we first define delta set, then delta nu, then delta nu n. Delta set is a set of all those x belonging to E where phi star x is strictly less than psi star x. Right? So it is a set of all those x belonging to E where this inequality holds. Now delta nu, it is a set of all those x belonging to E where phi star x is less than psi star x minus 1 by nu. Right? So this delta nu depends on nu. If we take nu to be 1, it is a set of all those x belonging to E where phi star is strictly less than psi star minus 1. We take nu to be 2, so we get this is minus half and so on. Right? And the third set delta nu n which is the set of all those x belonging to E where phi n x is less than psi n x minus 1 by nu. So here this set, it depends on n also. Here we are having infimum and supremums. And here we are having all those points from E where each phi n x is less than psi n x minus 1 over nu. Now these are some observations. A part 
now clearly delta nu when you take the union of these delta nu's we get delta okay now just see sin and x is nothing m by n into k into characteristic function over a k okay and sum of all these similarly phi n then clearly our fx is lying between phi n and psi n right now we have to take the infimum over all this psi n and phi n after taking the integral so we take the integral of this function psi n and then we will take infimum over all the simple functions greater than equals to f then clearly this is less than equal to any integral we know that infimum is less than equal to any integral okay and now you substitute the value of sin nx from here we substitute the value over here so we get this is m by n into this we will substitute this value over here so now just see since we have taken integral over here so this will be replaced by major right the same way supremum right so next we take the difference of these two we will get this inequality when we take the difference of these two we will get this inequality we get this is m by n summation k varying from minus n to n k times measure of ek minus k minus 1 times measure of ek which will give you nothing but measure of ek okay and what is this sorry this is nothing measure of e is nothing but measure of ek summation of measure of ek so we can substitute the value of this as the measure of e right so we get this is m by n into measure of e now since our set is measurable with finite measure so this value is finite capital m value is finite so we get the infimum of psi greater than equal to f right over this integral minus supremum is less than equal to m by n into measure of e since this number is finite and this is true for each n so we will get this number is 0 when you take n tending to infinity okay so we will get this number the same as that this number this is what this is nothing but the upper lebesgue integral this is nothing but the lower lebesgue integral so both these values are same so we get function is lebesgue integrable over e right so this theorem is very important theorem because it provides the connection between integrability and measurability right so this is very important theorem exam point